Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to take you through going backwards in time and why you might want to reinstall the Windows Movie Maker from old. That's right, the one from XP, even if you're using Windows 7. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Windows Live Movie Maker that's come out. And I want to go over some of the features because a lot of people have been saying that they don't like this version because it doesn't have some of the things of the old Movie Maker. And in some ways they're right and in some ways they're wrong. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ribbon up at the top. We have themes here. This is something that's new within Windows Movie Maker Live. Now that's uh, one added feature and you have a lot of different themes that you can use, just automatic themes. But all these things that are up here, adding videos and photos, adding music, webcam is also something that's new, but even the snapshots and all the text that you can use, that was all previously in the old v version of Windows Movie Maker. Let's go ahead and jump onto the animations. The transitions are pretty much the same the pan and zoom for anything that you might use for still images that is the same the visual effects those are actually there in the old version of movie maker whether you got a widescreen or standard view was there being able to preview it using video tools like the speed up and slow down <clears throat> and last but not least text those are all things that were available in the old version of Movie Maker. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you can publish a movie. This is where it gets a little different. On this version, you can go right to your SkyDrive, which is a great way to save things if you don't want into the cloud, if you don't want to use up a lot of space on your computer. Of course, you can go to Facebook, YouTube, and Flickr. Those are also good ones. Adding a plugin, there's really nothing there right now. I know the third party vendors are trying to scramble to get some of these plugins made, but there really isn't anything out there right now. If we want to save a movie out, the other thing that it, that's kind of nice is that you can burn it straight to a DVD or you can make a 1080p high resolution or high definition display. So that's something new that's in the new Live Movie Maker. Last but not least that I want to cover here, is that you can add MOVs and MP4 videos within this. Now, of course, when you save them out, it'll be converted into a WMV, but at least you can import those things. So if you have one of those new cameras and it doesn't save in the AVI or the WMV format, you can bring those things into Windows Live Movie Maker. Now, with all that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the old version. Now, I happen to be running... Windows 2.6, the old version of Windows Movie Maker, on here. Now, these are the types of things that I want to go through, just the same type that we went on the Live Movie Maker. You can import your videos and pictures. Now, this is where it gets a little different. This microphone is conspicuously gone in the new version. A lot of people have been asking me, how do I do an, a voiceover? Well, this is how you do a voiceover right here. You click on it, and you're able to narrate your timeline. In the Windows Live Movie Maker, you'll have to do something like go to Audacity and record your voice and try and match it up and then bring that into your video. Another thing that is kind of nice is being able to send this back out to a DV camera. You can send this back out to your DV camera and save it on a mini DV cassette. And so if you don't want to save tons and tons of gigabytes worth of data on your hard drive just stick it on one of those mini DV tapes and it'll be fine. Now the bad thing about this version of Movie Maker is the fact that you can only import WMV MPEG2 well let's go ahead and take a look import video hit the drop down box these are the only things on video files standard MPEGs MP2s wow AVIs pretty much WMVs. So there's not a whole lot of choices that you can import with. So if you have a lot of stuff that's MP4 or MOV related, you'll want to stick with the Windows Live Movie Maker. Another nice thing about this is the ability to tweak this. Um, oh, let me check out a couple things that 
Um, you might not have known that we're in this old version where speed up double and slow down half. So those are available here as well as the old film look to this. All these video effects are still here. I uh, forgot to go through some of these. You, you have the standard video transitions. This take picture from preview, that's there on the new version. Being able to control your audio levels is there. You've got your uh, titles and credits. All that is there on the new version as well. It's just a different format. Some people like this timeline version. And then some people are actually getting used to this new version right here where you can go in here and have a, a nice look at what it your video looks like here. Now, one of the things that I want to show you is, is that on the video transitions, people have been asking me, how do I get picture in picture? Now, standard, picture in picture is not available in Windows Movie Maker. But some of those famous hackers out there have been able to go in and hack this using XML code. So let's go ahead and take a look at the video transitions. Now, it's considered a transition, but I went ahead and I downloaded some of these transitions, which really aren't transitions. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go down to where it says, look at that, picture in picture. If I want to, let's move this over. If I wanted to go in and I wanted to add a picture in picture to my video, I have to make sure that I have the two videos side by side at first. Then I come over here to my picture in picture. I drag it in between the two, and now what I can do is I can drag this one on top of the other one, right there. And as you can see, let's go ahead and take a look here, you have a picture-in-picture -picture right here. Now how did I do that? Well, let's go over to our internet browser. First thing you need to do is you need to type in Windows Movie Maker 2.6. So if you're running Vista or if you're running Windows 7, the very first one that's going to come down is Download Details Windows Movie Maker 2.6. Now it does say it's for Vista, but I'm running Windows 7 and I assure you that it does work. The next thing that you're going to want to do is open up another tab or another window and you're going to want to go to windowsmoviemakers.net slash forums. And then you're going to scroll all the way down towards the bottom, and then it's going to go to Movie Maker Users Showcase. The one that you want is Share Your XP Transitions and Effects. You don't want the Vista because we're using 2.6. So click on this one, and it's going to show you all the available transition and custom effects for version 2.6. Right at the top, it gives you the important steps on what you have to do to add this to your version of Windows Movie Maker. Now, I've already done this by going over into your computer and onto your C drive. It tells you right on there, onto your C drive, and then go into Program Files, and then there's going to be one called Movie Maker. They call it Movie Maker, but we downloaded Movie Maker 2.6. Then, under shared we add a folder called add on tfx right there and then we download all these different transitions they are just xml format pip.xml i added that into my add on tfx folder now this is case sensitive so you're going to have to create a new folder here but all of this is done right here for you. There's all sorts of zoom, split transitions, side-by-side -side videos. There's all sorts of things that you can add to the old version of Movie Maker that you cannot add to the Windows Live Movie Maker. Now we're all hoping that soon somebody will be able to provide some sort of an ethical hack for the Windows Live Movie Maker. But until then, go Download Windows Movie Maker 2.6, have a little fun, add some of those custom transitions like the picture in picture that you've always wanted before. The one caveat that I have for this is remember that you can only import the older style codecs, the MPEG 2s, the MPEGs, the AVIs, and the WMVs. So if you have MOVs or MP4s, you're going to have to convert those. And you might be able to convert those using the Windows Live Movie Maker. Just drag them in 
and then just do a save as WMV if you want to play with these things. So on my version of Windows 7, I'm going to keep the Windows Live Movie Maker up, and I'm also going to play around with my version of Windows Movie Maker 2.6. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers!